It is my pleasure at this time uh, to welcome to the program the Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics. Uh, Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics is a longtime partner with the Boy Scouts of America in delivering quality outdoor ethic education. Uh, and he, to tell us all about their programs, uh, please welcome their executive director, Dana Watts. Dana has uh, joined Leave No Trace in 1995 when it was incorporated and has served for over two decades as their executive director. So Dana, welcome aboard and glad to have you with us today. I'm thankful for the outdoors for giving me purpose. I'm thankful for wide open spaces. I'm thankful for awesome trails that I can run in. Like the squirrels and the caterpillars. I'm thankful for the escape from the city. I'm thankful for wilderness because it makes me feel like my best person. Thankful for the outdoors because it provides inspiration. I'm thankful for snowy mountains to ski on. It's a beautiful wilderness. I'm thankful for plants because they bring us oxygen. I'm thankful for majestic mountains, alpine lakes, sagebrush prairie, and grasslands galore. I'm thankful for the peacefulness of trails. I'm thankful for the sound of moving water. We're thankful for the switchback takers, the orange peel packer outers, the cat hole diggers, the wildlife respecters, the leave no tracers. We're thankful for you. Protect what you're thankful for. Join, renew, or donate today. Can everyone hear me okay? I'm hope, hoping that uh, audio came across and uh, slight technical difficult, difficulty. But again, I'm Dana Watts and I'm the executive director at the Leave No Trace Center for Outdoor Ethics. And I am delighted to be with you here today. Um, I'm coming straight from my son's bedroom uh, and I am here in Boulder, Colorado. And as a Colorado native, I just wanna start off by saying that my staff and I want to acknowledge that this land here is within the territories of the Ute, Cheyenne, and Arapaho peoples, and it's also 48 contemporary tribal nations are historically tied to this land that make up the state of Colorado. I decided to show that video as a little bit of uh, afternoon inspiration, and I just um, want to reiterate that we're all leave no tracers, or we wouldn't be here today, and I know that there is profound passion for nature and for the outdoors. And it's really why we do what we do and why I've been with the organization for 25 years or so, who's counting. Um, but here we are today and really looking at where we've been, where we, um, and really where we're going. But I want to acknowledge also the rich history that Leave No Trace shares with the Boy Scouts. Um, no single entity in the US reaches more kids and reaches more kids with Leave No Trace. And building that ethic is paramount to what we do. In merit badges, the rank scheme, adult leader training, youth training, volunteers, seasonal staff, there's so many ways that the Boy Scouts have moved this, what really started out as a concept into a movement in the US and worldwide. We are thankful for your commitment and your support and for really making this program um, what it is today. I thought I would share a few milestones and I know I'm not covering everything and, and many of you have been around um, as long as I have and I'm sure there are other, other partnership milestones, but these are some of the ones that came to me, um, proud partner from the beginning. So we were incorporated as a nonprofit late in 1994 and shortly, I believe shortly thereafter we started having discussions with the Boy Scouts of America, and they became one of our first partners. The board of directors, um, we've, uh, we had Dave Bates, many of you probably remember serving on our board, 
and the Education Review Committee and um, our very own Jeff Marion, who we just heard from, served early on in both capacities, um, and I believe that was all around 1998. In 2001, we had our first staff and teams join with the, the National Jamboree and, and, and really uh, participated every year from that time. In 04, there was a task force that we was created to really take on this thing, outdoor ethics, um, and how it would impact the organization. And that was then subsequently turned into a standing subcommittee. In 04, the BSA uh, became official master course providers. And that really changed um, the way that the course could be offered to uh, or within the organization. And that many more people became master um, certified, although we don't use that word, Certifi certifications. Um, and I believe there's one that I'm missing, and that is the, I want to say in 2019 also, could have been a little bit before that, that Leave No Trace was really built into the rank scheme for the Boy Scouts, and that just meaning every kid that goes through um, was educated in Leave No Trace and, um, and needed that in order to earn that highest level and the Eagle Scout. So that was pretty significant. Um, it might have been earlier, I, I could be corrected on that, but it just demonstrates, um, again, the Boy Scouts leadership position within the whole program. And then finally, most recently, um, High Adventure Camps, the Summit Center in West Virginia and Philmont have both um, taken on our youth, youth programs accreditation, and that's in process. But again, it just shows the Boy Scouts as these early adopters and significant player within um, all that Leaving a Trace does. So I'm gonna do a quick review on 2020 and what a year it was um, as, for all of us. We've all felt everything that's gone on and um, it spared no one, the pandemic, social justice, elections, so on and so forth. And here we are with Zoom and how we communicate today. This is um, a cast of characters from our, our uh, practice session the other night. You probably recognize all of them. And so in 2020, of course, we all pivoted with the pandemic. We started off the year on an exciting course. And in March, we, um, like everyone, the pandemic hit us and we closed the office. Our traveling teams were all sent home. Uh, most of our programming, particularly our in-person, including hotspots, were all canceled. And what it forced us to do is, uh, is really learn a new way of working with everybody at home, everybody largely on Zoom, um, and uh, a new way of communicating, of working, and trying to figure out how we were going to provide that programming, that outreach, that training, that education for the masses, and, and if that was possible. I, despite the pandemic, we had many accomplishments, many successes in 2020, still going, but I thought I'd just touch on a few, and I just wanna reiterate that these are high level. I'm not gonna, of course, cover everything, um, and I'm sure there will be questions, but these are the things that we focused on um, slight, kind of as a result of the pandemic, but uh, many of these things were in progress and we just had to figure out a new way of doing our work and doing our business. So I'll start with education programming. We completed three hotspots early in the year in Florida, Arizona, and Texas before we were forced off, our teams were really forced off the road. Um, we did have one of the first hotspots uh, in at National Oce Oceanic and Atmospheric Research with NOAA, and that was exciting. Um, but then we had 12 more that after a lot of discussion we had to, we did not cancel, but we did delay until next year. So our plan is to complete those hotspots, but not until next year. Um, as I've mentioned, we care, we are, we are focused on our youth and of course youth, youth progress programming. And one of those biggest um, uh, focuses for us right now is the accreditation. And so you're very familiar with that. Um, it's in the process, as I've mentioned. Uh, my colleague Andrew will be talking a lot more about that, but I thought I'd mention that we do have almost 40 camps that are either in the process or have completed that program. So it's, it's very exciting. And again, you'll hear a lot more about that. 
Um, our gold standard designation is an important um, highest level earning for, for parks and public lands. And this year we have continue to build that program and set the criteria and work with different areas on what it means to be gold standard. And I'll talk a little bit more about that within Colorado and how that's working for us. Research has been a huge push for us for the past um, number of years. It will continue into 2021. And of course, Ben, right after me, will talk more detail about some of our research efforts. But this year, uh, one of the biggest things was the pandemic. And early in the pandemic, we launched COVID research, really in an effort to understand the implication that this pandemic was having on people and in the people in the outdoors and patterns and how things were changing and what they were doing early in the pandemic, midway through the pandemic. And then of course, here we are um, in this continued state and things have, have changed quite a bit. Um, there's, there was a lot of interest in this research. It was published quite uh, broadly and there's still interest in continuing to understand how things are changing. Will they last? I think that's one of the biggest questions that we want to ask and how some of these things will impact then the land management agencies. Another effort has been our citizen science and that's been launched um, and kind of been um, we've been developing the whole effort. A new version of our citizen science app is now available for uh, smartphones, Androids. Um, it's upgraded features. It has a lot of interesting, just general leave no trace information and then customizable projects. We're, we're piloting the citizen science effort and we really hope to build on that and, and make it more widespread and available in 2021. And then finally, I'll talk a little bit more and Ben will as well, is um, one of our newest research projects. The, it's, it's couched under ERB, Environmentally Responsible Behavior. And for, for a long time, and I'll talk with, with uh, under our category of strategic planning, for a long time, I have felt strongly that people who embrace a leave no trace ethic in the outdoors they come home and they have that it's it's that's just ingrained as their ethic and they take those those high level principles and can apply them to different areas and so we're really trying to understand if that is in fact true and can be backed by some research and then what we can actually do with that information so we did launch a project a study um, in early october so pretty new was the data collection um, it was facilitated with an online survey large pool of leave no trace trainers, master educators, and members, but then at the same time, naturally, uh, nationally represented sample um, that was census matched was also launched for, um, that really looked at age, race, gender, income, so much broader in its focus. Again, Ben will, ben will talk more about this project because it's, it's a really interesting one for us, um, and I think that the results and the data that we that we gain from that should also be pretty fascinating. Libra Trace training in 2020, one of the areas that was heavily impacted by the pandemic. Um, you know, as a master educator provider, we just couldn't do what we normally do, hoping to get all of our providers back up and running uh, in 2021, although that's of course yet to be seen. Um, so with that, we, we launched and developed a virtual training in April, um, two day trainer course and so far, 60,000 people have completed the training. So um, it may be one of those things that we take a look at uh, and decide to um, carry forth for a bit longer or into, into the future. That's something that we're considering. And then, of course, our traveling teams. And I've talked a little bit about them. Um, and I will talk more about how they were maybe the most impacted by the pandemic. As I said, um, we had four teams on the road. Um, they all were uh, basically sent home and we decided that most of their outreach and training would need to be done digitally. And so um, that is what they took on. And they have, have done an, an incredibly um, incredible job of getting our message out there in creative, new ways, but all digital. And so we're really looking at what that looks like for 2021. And I'll speak to that a little bit um, more later on. 
um, the, the teams, I will say the teams, um, they, they provided a range of virtual programming that was largely Instagram um, and lives and um, in the forms of videos. They did, uh, they, we do end up reaching a ton, a ton of people. And I'll talk about all, our social media in a second. Um, we did have one team up in Alaska working in the park and they were able to provide some training. So we had about 214 different events that the teams were able to take on. But again, most of their, their work was done digitally and probably will continue in that way for a bit longer. Partnerships for Leave No Trace remain core to our work and to our ability to really get our message out there to the masses and that will continue. Um, for, th for this year, a uh, new partnership that sprang up early on, Recreate Responsibly, and you've probably seen the hashtag, you may have seen some of the information this group has put out. We are part of this coalition, we are serving on their steering committee. Largely their focus at the beginning was to put out information that was around the health, health, and, safe, health and safety and people getting onto the land in a safe way during COVID. At this point, there is uh, that we have about 600, I believe, different partners within this coalition. And there's a huge range, lots of diversity, um, land management ag agencies, some corporate, but everybody interested in really coming together to put messaging out there. So we're working with them to make sure that the leave no trace messaging they have is accurate and consistent and then above and beyond that, if there is other messaging that is necessary or continues with COVID, we will um, we'll be a part of that. It's been an interesting partnership for sure. Um, we also continue to work very closely with the land management agencies. Really for us primarily, that's the Bureau of Land Management, Park Service and the Forest Service right now. Um, they have all been long-term partners of ours, as you know, and they continue to help and play a key role in our programming, Hotspots, Gold Standard, um, that slowed down for obvious reasons a little bit this year. But they also are uh, very important on our, it, as part of our review and research network, which is, um, it's an ev evolution of what used to be the Education Review Committee. And this is a group that's a little more broad in nature and um, we are in, a in the process of reinvigorating that group. And Ben may talk a little bit more about um, the review and research network. And then lastly within, um, or what a couple more within key partnerships, tourism has been a huge focus for the center in the last few years. We started with Colorado the Colorado Tourism Office, and largely because we felt like reaching people at that early stage, the early trip planning stage, would be beneficial, and we all know this doing Leave No Trace, um, in that plan ahead and prepare stage. If we can get information to people as they're planning their trip, before they get to their final destination, their trip will be that much better and leave much less of an impact um, than it might otherwise. And so we started working with Colorado and it's, it's been an unbelievably successful partnership in terms of getting our message out to visitors coming in the state and also residents traveling within the state. So it's really not just a program for, it's, it is a program for all tourists, but that includes visitors and residents alike. Um, we've taken that concept, that model, and now we are broadening it and we have four other states um, that act actually, sorry, three other uh, statewide partnerships that we have created this year, Arizona, North Carolina, and we're just about to um, start work with New Hampshire. So kind of a broad range of geographic and certainly um, Different, different needs and nuances within each of those states and slightly smaller tourism efforts within Wisconsin, with, within Wisconsin and Alabama. So it's really a growing effort for us. And um, it seems even in these COVID times that it's an area that tourism agencies, which are largely couched in the government are really, really interested in. Um, and then finally, I just want to reiterate our, again, our partnership structure in general. Corporate partners remain very, very important to Leave No Trace in terms of uh, not only getting the message out, 
but in supporting and financially supporting all that we do. Subaru is still a very big partner of ours. We just renewed a contract with them to continue supporting our traveling teams. Um, many other outdoor industry related partners um, and then our community partnership program and that is NGOs, nonprofits, land management agencies, um, user groups, membership organizations, lots of other uh, groups, hundreds of groups that support Leave No Trace in many ways and help really bring the, me the message to the masses. And then finally, um, media. This year, and I believe it's partially because of just people getting out, increased numbers, getting out onto the land and the need to include the principles in any way, in any way uh, we can, we've seen 192% growth over 2019 in our just general media placements. And that's a direct link back to the Leave No Trace Center uh, or an inclusion of the Leave No Trace principles. Uh, and that's also been in some really um, kind of high level publications. Um, so the, the word is absolutely getting out there. Social media, we have about 250,000 followers in our various channels. And um, again, because our teams were so active digitally, um, and this is just one example of the team's YouTube channel, 345,000 views. Uh, so again, a 50% growth for some of our media efforts has been fantastic. So looking on Leave No Trace in 2020 and beyond, um, we spent a lot of time on strategic planning in the last 18 months or so. We had a very robust um, process and, and it was around 18 months. It felt like 18 years at some times, but um, as anyone who's gone through this process, you'll know that it, um, you, you can't really cut corners and if you push it along too quickly, you're just not gonna get the outcome or the end result that you want. And so this was a process that involved the staff and the board and different constituent groups, consultants. Uh, we did market research, SWATs and more. And again, anyone who's gone through that process knows that it's time intensive, it's emotional, and to come out on the other side is very gratifying. And I'd like to say that we are close. We are not there 100%, but we are very close to a plan. And what we found um, in just in, in terms of conceptually is our work has moved beyond the trail and our audience is growing and continues to grow beyond just outdoor enthusiasts. It really is, Leave No Trace is for everyone. It's a conservation ethic for all. And so what we do with this information and um, the importance, the critical nature of where we are is really, really paramount to how we set that vision for the future. So I'm sharing today with you um, bits of our strategic plan. And like I said, nothing is official yet. We haven't uh, launched or really been very public outward facing with our strategic plan. So I'm sharing the strategic priorities that we've identified. And I do so with some detail, but know that there's a lot more packed into each of these strategic priorities that um, we will start talking more about and you will hear more about um, once we get to probably early next year and we have more of our actual rollout plan. But I'm happy to share and I'm excited to share where we are. We have five strategic priorities and the first is expanding the center's aperture. So fully harnessing this concept of backcountry, backyard to backcountry as a primary tenant for us to engage a broader audience. And part, part of this means um, opening more doors for more people to participate, for them to embrace the ethic, more welcoming, user-friendly. It really, this, this strategic priority has two main goals. The first is to expand our education, sustainability and outreach offerings into everyday life and for a broader audience. 
So it's really kind of building on this concept of backyard to back country and it's the leave no trace lifestyle. And so what that looks like and means is, is um, to be announced next year. The second is building a more diverse, equitable and inclusive leave no trace movement. And um, there, there has been no escaping this year of, um, I guess, it's, I think it's fair to say unrest in terms of Black Lives Matter and movements of inclusivity, especially when it comes to the outdoors. And Leave No Trace is very aware of um, our place and wanting to build a more inclusive, uh, not necessarily organization, but movement so people want to be in the outdoors they connect without the outdoors in a meaningful way and they see leave no trace as a res resource and education that is for them and so we've really looked at that what that means and what that means across the board for our programming our messaging our organization and that's really the goal um, in number two under this strategic priority the second is establish Leave No Trace as the leading voice for minimum impact sustainability in the outdoors. And really that's talking to our communication, building com a powerful communications that builds and, and encourages visitor behavior, encourages increased constituency and partnerships. The third is Actually, sorry, going back to number two, um, the second goal under number two captures a lot of our programming. Um, it is how we kind of demonstrate Leave No Trace in action and how we activate people. So I'll go into a little bit more of that in a second. Um, the third priority, elevate and leverage our scientific research and data. And I've talked a little bit about this. I'm not gonna go into detail because Ben will. But we, we not only do we know and understand, but we are more and more embracing the critical nature of research and everything that we do. And so our, our number one goal is to expand the opportunities for participating in research and science programming so we can engage more people. And that's largely the citizen science effort. And then the second is really continuing our social science to inform education training efforts and maintain credibility and positioning as the leader in this human dimensions research. Um, we, of course, incorporating what Jeff's work and that on the ground research is part of what we wanna do. And so there's, um, I think the hope is that there's a seamless connection between all research efforts um, that have to do with Leave No Trace. Our fourth strategic priority is to evolve our training structure to create a world of stewards. And that's that goes from um, our basic outreach courses, awareness, all the way up to the master course. And that the goal is training is made more accessible and appealing to larger and more diverse audiences. And then lastly, we are looking to evolve our partnerships to increase our reach, um, our resources, and our credibility within um, within everything that we do. And so I've, I've, I, I touched on a little bit on our uh, partnerships and how critical they are to us as an organization. As you probably know, Leave No Trace is pretty small as an organization. It's, it's pretty, we like to say it is small but mighty. And we do a lot with limited resources and it just underscores the importance of partnerships for us. And moving forward, that will only increase. And so we rely heavily on our partnerships for many, many reasons. And so it's, um, it's an important strategic priority for us. The work has already started within, um, whoop, let me just go back here. Um, the work has already started within many of these um, priorities. We are starting to really plan out our 2021 operational plan and or more finalize that plan and then also look at um, three to five years out. And so I just thought I'd give you a sense of some of the work that's already going on. Um, DEI focus is big for us. We've created an internal working group that is um, 
is actually finalizing an action plan, um, helping center to, to build a more diverse, equitable, inclusive culture. Um, we have different new collaborations that we're working on with groups uh, like Black Folks Camp 2 and Outward Bound Adventures and some of these groups that are reaching these um, diverse communities, people of color, and we want to work directly with them to make sure that our messaging is meaningful and is right and is, um, is, is making a difference for these different communities that, that are important to us. Um, we also just created new messaging. It's called the Leave No Trace Basics and it's going to be launched very soon, but it's a basic education piece developed um, in coordination with some of these different groups um, that includes representation also from Latino community um, and it's really a piece that is, it's being also translated to Spanish, but it's really a piece that, again, is not comprehensive, leave no trace, and, and not necessarily the listing of the principles, but really is a basic introduction and a welcome to, this is the outdoors, and this is how you can play an important role in protecting the outdoor places that we all, all love. Um, our core programs that you're probably most familiar with um, are very much active and alive and we are moving into 2021 with programming. Um, those include hotspots, our every park assessment, and that's really largely focused on the 62 national parks. How does Leave No Trace have a presence, an active presence in every national park in the U.S. right now? Uh, gold standard sites, um, the teams, all of our, our traveling teams, youth programming, and our citizen science. Um, these are all core programs that have been around for now years that are still very important to, to us as an organization, to our partners, and again, to really demonstrate how Leave No Trace works on the ground and is still very much grassroots in its foundation. Um, so those will all be in play and we look forward to sharing more detail on how those will work. We do know that we have 12 hotspots scheduled for this year, but again, some of these, um, these, these programs that are up in the air because of COVID, we won't have more detail, but we will share everything that we can soon with regard to those projects. Um, just some final thoughts, and the, there are many, many ways that we uh, want to continue working with, with the Boy Scouts, um, and these are just a few that came to mind, and one is with the training and the mention of training, and at that being one of our strategic priorities to really reach more Scouts, make it more accessible, make it more meaningful. Um, we will be doing an audit of all of our programs internally and once we have more information, we then will share that out and work with, with some of our key partners, including the Boy Scouts to really figure out um, next steps in, turn, in terms of this goal of reaching even more uh, with, with um, training options. And then secondly, uh, working together to reach diverse participants in scouting. Um, Again, more and more people getting outside today, um, and that's across the board. That's new, just general new people to the outdoors. That's diverse groups, people of color, and we very much believe that the outdoors is for all, and the more we can welcome and, and um, connect people with nature, the more we all win, but connecting them with Leave No Trace at the same time is is critical. And so how can we do that? How can we aid in your efforts? Um, and, and finally, the, the youth program accreditation, which again, Andrew's going to go into a lot more depth and explanation about where we are and how that program is um, continuing and your, your important participation in that. Um, I'm not sure how much time I, I have left, but I think that might be, um, might be it for me. I'm, I'm at least going to pause there. And I just, again, I want to say that together building on this legacy, not the, the scouting legacy is, is deep and it's, I know it's changing and evolving. And I think it's, um, I think it's probably been challenging, but I think it's also incredible to see the direction and to see 
um, how this the whole organization also has had to pivot over the over the years and create something that will reach these new audiences. And our world is changing, our society is changing. We're seeing it before our eyes. And nature and the outdoors has never been more important. It's again, it's why you do what you do. It's why I'm here. We are all leave no trace, and we feel passionate. And um, it's it's really part of our life and our lifestyles. And if we could bring that to more people and connect them in a way that leave no trace is part of it, it's that much more profound and that much more long lasting. And so I just want to applaud all of your work. And I know that, again, to reiterate the volunteer nature of everything that you do is, is um, it's, it's something to be proud of. And so I just can't reiterate that enough. And I'm happy that I had the time with you today. And I think we're pausing maybe for questions, but maybe for Ben. And okay. Scott, I don't know, you tell me. Dana, I was gonna ask you, are you willing to stay to the end till after Andrew's presentation and yeah, I'll handle sure. all the questions at the same time? Yeah, that's no that problem. Would be, that would be terrific. Uh, yeah, thank you so true. much for your presentation. It is so great to hear from you. And congratulations to you and your entire staff for the way you embrace this new normal of training and uh, the resources and tools that you're providing us to, to achieve our mission. So Dana, thank you once again. It's been my pleasure.